haven't been on to read a story for a little while, but uh, a few people have been requesting stories lately, so I thought I would read another one. So today I've got The Second Princess by Hewen Oram and illustrated by Tony Ross. I read this book to my children so often I can hardly tell you about it. And I think the themes running through it are so true. They are also discussed in um, The Adams Family, where they say, the two elder children say, when the third arrives, one of the first two will have to die. So we feel very competitive in families about our position and where we are. And so this is the story. Once upon a time, there were two princesses. The first princess and the second princess. The first princess liked being first. But the second princess did not like being second. She ran to the woods to find the grey wolf. Grey wolf! Grey wolf! she said. You must come into the palace at the dead of night and gobble up my sister so that I can be first. Goodness gracious, said the grey wolf. What a wicked thought. I would never do a thing like that. Never. So the second princess went to find the brown bear. Brown bear, brown bear, she said, you must come to the palace and marry my sister so that she's not at home and I can be first. Oh, must I indeed, said the brown bear. Well, let me tell you, I wouldn't marry your sister if she were the last person on earth. Besides, as you can see, I'm happily married. So the second princess stamped into the palace kitchens, her face as white as a sheet. Cook, cook, she said, baked in a pile, gone in a puff of steam, I don't care. I want my sister out of the way so I can be first and that's an order. Very well, said the greedy cook. But I shall want something in return. Like what, said the second princess. Jewels, said the greedy cook. Your mother's jewels, all of them. Jewels, jewels and more jewels. Hmm. Now try, said the second princess. So the second princess crept into her mother's bedroom and did what she could, cramming and stuffing and pocketing glittering, gorgeous things. Locket, lockets, tiaras and watches Necklaces, chokers and chains, bracelets, brooches and earrings, hat pins, buckles and rings. And though her heart was beating like a loud clock and her knees were trembling like trembly jelly, she grew so busy with it, she did not notice the maid come in to make the bed, the queen come in to find the maid. Two ladies in waiting, waitings come in to find the queen. Two guards come in to find the ladies in waiting. The Lord High Chamberlain come in to find the guards and the king come in to find the Lord High Chamberlain. In fact, only when the maid sobbed, <laughs> The queen gasped. <gasps> the ladies in waiting fainted. 
The guard shouted, who goes there? And the king marched her off to the throne room. Did she realise that she was caught red-handed in the act? Well, said the king, when they were alone in the throne room, I am waiting. I am waiting. I am waiting. But of course, the one thing in the world the second princess could never do was tell what she had been doing with the queen's jewels. All she could do was hang her head and try not to imagine what would happen if anyone found out. At last, the queen swept in with an idea. If you cannot tell us what you were doing with the jewels, she said, then we shall have to guess. Was it to polish them? The second princess shook her head. Was it to play kings and queens? said the king. The second princess shook her head. Was it to give them to someone? said the queen. In return for something you wanted very, very much. And then, and only then, did the second princess put her hands over her eyes so that she could only half be seen and whispered softly through her fingers. So the king and queen had to come very, very close to hear. Yes, came the soft whisper, so that I could be first. And to her great surprise, the sky did not fall in and the world did not come to an end. Instead, the queen sighed gratefully and the king said, Thank goodness we know. Now run along and help your mother put away her tiaras. And from now on, you will be first on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, which she was. And the first princess will be first on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays, which she was. And on Sundays, we will all be first, said the king. And they were. And though the first princess took a while getting used to not being first all of the time, and the second princess took a while getting used to being first some of the time, and Sundays were always a bit of a bun fight, they all lived very happily afterwards. Except for the cook, who stormed off in a huff because all she wanted was jewels, jewels and more jewels. And because she never knew which day of the week it was anyway. I hope you enjoyed that and um, please subscribe and I will um, get some more stories out. Take care.